Okay, I've got my batter ready to go. Uh, I've mixed all of my colors. There's natural, there's black. Aneto, and then my indigo is a lighter this time. Sometimes I do it light, sometimes I do it dark. Uh, the matter root, which always looks light until uh, you, it uh, cures. And then my spirulina. Um, so I'm just going to start pouring. Uh, you can see it's pretty light. Sometimes I'll keep uh, one stick. I'm just making sure that uh, you keep it flowing. You might have to stir here and there. Uh, but I'm just going to uh, put a couple of tablespoons. Just enough to kind of cover the bottom of the flour. And let it start uh, flowing out. I don't know if that last one, tipped one, is going to work. Usually an empty spot, but I don't like the big empty gap. Alright. And our next one is going to be the black. Going to put a whole lot. If I was coordinated, I would be doing this with both hands, and I am not that coordinated at all. I don't want to pour too much because I want to keep the cells from merging as much as possible with the next flower right now. Are they um, here comes the Aneto. Try to pour somewhat in the middle so it goes out evenly. Um, or not. I guess that's the beauty of it. They're all going to be different. And everybody's going to do it a little bit differently. And they're all going to be wonderful. So, I'm going to keep going through this process with all my colors and then I will just start back. I get a real different effect if you uh, do white every other one. It, um, much more tiger striping. They don't. The colors don't blend. It, it's very. Uh, the lines stand out very well. It's just a different look. Uh, sometimes this looks really dark when you do it, and you're thinking, "Oh, this is not gonna show up good." But when you pull the slab and you cure it, cure it and uh, cut it. It's amazing what these colors do. Um, I do sea pop it. I do the sea pop. I uh, will preheat my oven to 170. That's actually the lowest my oven goes, so it works perfectly. Um, as soon as the buzzer goes off that it's preheated, I turn my oven off. I don't cover my slab. This this particular soap with my this recipe and here in my conditions always gets soda ash um, but anything like this you're going to want to plane it anyhow on the top to see the design you just about have to um, so I plane it and it's not a bother to me I've steamed it before and I've washed the front of the slab before I think it's uh, La Fille de Mer that uh, suggested that in a video um, that's worked on some. It doesn't work great on this one. You just end up planing it, and I'm all right with that. This is the only soap that I... I'm going to stir this again. This is my spirulina. Uh, I, uh, this is the only one that, out of ten that I do, that I have to plane. And that, and that is also in a slab mold, uh, other than a facial bar that I do. It's not a big bother. I enjoy it, actually. And I save all my shavings. And, um, and then I'm going to rebatch them. So, I'm going to start back with the natural. And hit every strainer. So I'll probably speed this up 
uh, so you don't have to keep watching this until I pull my straighteners out and then I'll probably uh, be back at normal speed so you don't have to suffer through this but um, well, let's see the soap strainers you can get a four pack of them I want to say for seven dollars on Amazon they don't seem to degrade um, from cutting them it's all plastic and then there's a rubber coating that I cut for the flower part doesn't seem to degrade them they clean up perfectly fine um, I've tried a couple of other different ones since seeing this and I'll try to have to link the original video that I saw this on on uh, Saponification Nation the person that I saw do this uh, and I'll try to link the sink strainers to the video but I have tried other ones and they haven't worked as well as these and this is what the video uh, the first poster that posted her beautiful soap used and since I didn't have any and they were um, quite affordable I went ahead and got these kind and then ordered more as I've been trying to come up with some different looks for it to get more flowers in the slab rather than just one in the center. So we'll see how this goes. I have way more indigo this time for some reason. I didn't weigh them when I separated them out. I just did it by eye, but I think I get to yakking and not pouring as much. I don't think it was that off. My containers are all, all different kinds of containers. shall see. I'm almost ready. The thing with this, you cannot pour too deep because you will go over the strain ridge and that's where you want to stop. You don't want to <clears throat> go over the edge of your strainer. So it'll just be pouring. You might as well be doing a final pour at that point. And the little st top of the strainer, the holes are about, I'm about to the top of them. Anyhow, I will try to end it with some scrapey of white. This is my last color. A little scrapey, that was a shout out to Royalty Soaps. This is scrapey. But I do like to get it all out and I don't want to waste any. I'll try to hit a little bit of the natural. And it's just about to the top of the holes. And then I'll show you how I pull these. I'll grab something to throw them in. Got my batter bowl. Pull the strainers and we'll put it in, the, give it a whack on the thing to get some air bubbles out, and then put it in the oven uh, to gel. So I've got my bowl, I just wiped it out real quick and stuck it in the sink uh, for my. like much. It's all dark looking, but it isn't once it's done. It's thing. There's no real way to scrape these. Just kind of shake off what you can. Let it drain back in without messing up the design too much. And you get it too full and these do float, which uh, isn't a good thing because you do want the bottom of the strainer on your uh, bottom of your mold or your liner. 
Uh, the bottom is actually what is the neatest part. The top usually is striped when you plane it down somewhat, depending on how many of these baskets you use. It kind of looks like mums or fireworks. I don't know how well you can see this. I have horrible light in here. So we've got all these pulled. And uh, it's very loose. You can see still how loose the batter is. So there's no even real sense of uh, giving it a whack. I don't want to spin or give it, move it too much. So I'm going to leave it like that. Uh, you can see the, the netto flowing up. And that's it. And I'm going to put it in the oven to see pop overnight. I don't cover it. I will spray it uh, when it sets up a little bit more. I have a 91% alcohol in here. I'll spray the top. Doesn't helps a little bit. Uh, I only have, this is the only soap that I do have that gets uh, such bad soda ash. But um, like I said, I plane it, so I'm all right with that. And that's it. Um, also, this is uh, unscented. I try to keep uh, one, and I chose this one, uh, the vegan one, to be unscented. Um, it has a little bit of a scent from the spirulina uh, for the first probably uh, month and right about the after a month and it's cured um, with the water discount uh, the scent starts fading and it's not doesn't have a bad scent at all at that point it was kind of a stinky hippie at some point with the algae and the other smells um, we jokingly called it but it actually has a lovely smell natural smell Oh, when it's cured. So.